This is Twit. Oh, all right. Uh, speaking of things being well put together, uh, do we want to dive into how 619 is coming together? Why, yes. So with the pull request for the 619, 619 kernel happening, I wanted to highlight some of the things which are going to be going into the kernel. Well, I mean, what what we think should be going in. I mean, this isn't set in stone yet. And even though they get pulled in, they can get unpulled if there are any glaring issues. It, it has happened in the past. Now, it's not usual, but it has happened. Uh, for example, the DRM color pi pipeline API support has been merged with initial use by the AD AMD GPU and VMKS drivers. Uh, we talked about this last week, how it's gonna make a standard interface for HDR, since HDR is more than just turning on more color bits. Uh, there's a lot of different ways HDR can be interpreted, you know, color palettes, different color gamuts, brightness, just to name a few. Now, there, I bring this up because there was a thought last week that the code might have been too late to make it in, but looks like Linus accepted it and we can expect to see it in 619. Uh, there's some initial code going in for XE3P, which is support for Intel's Nova Lake integrated graphics and Crescent Island AI accelerator. Now, this isn't all the code we're going to have for the XE3P. There's going to be more to come over the following months just to get things fully ready. This is just the initial set of patches going in. AMD GCN 1.0 and 1.1 are not defaulting to AMD GPU kernel driver anymore. Rather, they are defaulting to the AMD GPU kernel driver rather than the Radeon DRM driver. Uh, you could use it before but it was flag experimental and was uh, it was an opt-in before now. So now it's just going to default to the AMD GPU. And for those that don't know, that's kind of the way AMD's now going is just with the AMD GPU, the their, their proprietary driver or the official open source AMD driver, I guess, is uh, mm. kind of, it's it's taking a back seat now. It's, it's going with the community, they're supporting the community driven one. Uh, Novu now has support for larger pages, meaning pages which are larger than current the kernel's page size, and it has compression support. Uh, you know, as we mentioned previous, you know, previously in in la like even last week's show, Nvidia is now supporting their Nova open source kernel driver, and they're putting in preparations for f future GPUs into the code. So this will be Rubin GPU support specifically, as was mentioned. Uh, as as in the case with Intel code, this isn't final. There's going to be more patches coming in the future. A nice little feature being included as well is they're providing clearer error codes for the Nova driver. So 619 isn't going to make Nova ready for the average user yet, but because they're still adding features and working on the code, it still isn't quite up to feature. Uh, it's not as feature rich as uh, Novu. So it, it's getting there, but they're they're not quite there yet. Now, there, there are many other things I didn't cover, like more Rust support, blue screen of death, death type screens when the Intel driver has a DRM panic, uh, Intel SR-IOV, and that's where you take a single GPU and make it look like several GPUs in a virtual machine, and much more. So there's, there was a lot of uh, lot more that they that gra just, just on the graphics is getting included in 619. So take a look at the article linked in the show notes for even more details of you know, what's graphically going into the 619 kernel. It's There's a lot. Yeah, one of the ones is probably to no surprise to anyone, the, the color pipeline API. That one really interests me. Um, a lot of that is better. It's it's better support for things like uh, HDR, but there's, it's, it's more to it than that. Um, it's also better support for, um, I forget the term they use, color... I forget the term they use, but it's where you, you have a, like a profile, color profiles to, yes. to, to better um, optimize what your what your screen is going to look like to give you more accurate colors. Um, stuff it, like that is really interesting, too. Oh, yeah. It, it kind of has a standard interface now so that you can have all that. And basically, so that blue looks the same to me as it does to everybody else in the audience by using the, you know, based on what what display you're using, it knows gamuts and shifts and mm -hmm. brightness levels and it can do all sorts of work to uh make make colors more accurate and and just even better better defined and before there wasn't a, 
universal kind of interface. Now it's just saying, okay, here's the standard way we're going to do it. Yeah. It, to it, For those that have not tried to do like color matching and printing things that are on your monitor, let's, let's just, you know, you can talk about that one. Um, that color does not look the same to all of us right now. I'm sure it is wildly yeah. different. Um, yep. Ironically, if I if I move this screen from one monitor to the other, it looks different between the two monitors. The monitor built into my laptop over here, it looks very teal. Whereas over here, it's a very nice dark blue. Wildly different colors. Um, and, if, and if you want to see the true color, it's a Sherman Williams Nile blue. Nile so there, blue. There you Nile go. Nile blue. So if you want to... Go to the store and look at it, then you'll see what the color actually is. If you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out the Untitled Linux Show. You can find us in your favorite podcasting app or subscribe to our YouTube channel down in the links below. See you there.